Good day there. This is Joe Van Cleve and I am an office supply junkie. Welcome to another episode in our series. And uh, sometimes when you're an office supply junkie, going to the office supply store is not enough. Sometimes you need to make your own office supply stuff, in particular things that are kind of hard to find at the office supply store. And one of those is wallet sized notebooks. And I have these little things I call neat notebooks. Uh, I have this little uh, wallet carry, take anywhere, uh, write anytime, right? Handmade in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I'm gonna show you guys how I make these. You can make your own wallet sized notebooks from just a single sheet of paper. And then if you wanna make an extra cover, you can cut a piece out of another different kind of paper and make a, a stiffer cover. We're gonna make some neat notebooks today, so stay tuned. And of course, the whole reason why I call them a wallet carry notebook is because when you open your wallet, ta -da, they do indeed truly fit inside a regular wallet. Okay, for the things that we're going to need for the making our notebook, well, the first thing is the paper. Now, these are notebooks that are intended to be used for handwriting. Carry it in your wallet or purse. Carry a little small pin, like a Fisher Space Pin or some kind of a compact writing instrument, maybe a pencil. So um, one of the kinds of paper I like to write with by hand is this Mead uh, multi-purpose paper. This is the stuff that uh, is essentially like Mead's typing paper. It's a little bit thinner than the standard uh, printer paper or copy paper. And so it makes a compact notebook, but a good writing surface. It takes ballpoint pens. So I just need one sheet of that. And of course, I'm in the United States, so I'm using eight and a half by 11 inch uh, paper. That's what the sizes are going to be for this little project. If you live in the rest of the world, you may be using a four size paper paper or whatever is the appropriate size. If you're going to be using a separate cover uh, and you want a little bit thicker paper like cardstock is a good example of uh, a good cover material and they come in various colors. You can use the manila colored but I have a little light blue we'll try. If you go to some of the craft stores in the United States and maybe other countries there's little packs of this textured paper it kind of has a cloth texture to it and that kind of works pretty good as a cover also so you can get some some of this kind of textured paper at craft stores it's about the same thickness as cardstock but it has a nice kind of a fake cloth texture it works pretty good um, and you're going to need a way of accurately trimming the edges of the paper you could just use scissors but i prefer to use some kind of a paper trimmer that works best and with that paper trimmer i find using a steel straight edge is another little trick we'll show you that works good you're going to need a stapler to staple the binding of the paper and i have a little reference line i've put on across the side of the stapler and tape and i'll show you how i use that and to make the, um, the little notebook a little bit nicer looking, I like to trim the corners. And so you need a corner punch for punching the corners. And that's about it. So let's get started. We're going to start by trimming our cover stock. Now, the cover stock paper is also 8.5 by 11, and I'm going to basically cut it into quarters. And because I'm going to end up with four pieces of paper, you might want to make four notebooks at a time. So one sheet of cover card stock, four sheets of regular writing paper, you can make four notebooks at a time. But this is 8.5 by 11, so 11 divided by 2 is 5.5. And, and what I like to do is I like to lay a straight edge right along the cutting inboard of the cutting surface. So I'm at five and a half inches and I lay my ruler, my metal scale, just to keep the paper from shifting like that. And of course, eight and a half is four and a quarter. And again, I use my little metal straight edge to keep the paper from shifting. So we're going to have four covers. Okay, so now I'm going to fold my sheet of paper. And I'm going to basically make three folds. Now I'm going to be using, uh, this is optional, I'm going to be using what's called a bone folder. This is just a little piece of uh, thick plastic. It sort of simulates a piece of ivory or bone. And I'm, it's just an aid in folding the lines. You don't really need one of those. It's not uh, crucial. It might give you a little bit better fold if you're using a thicker kind of a paper. But um, 
I'm going to basically line up the edges. The, the better aligned the edges are, the more uniform the corners will be. So you basically fold it that way. And then one more fold, second fold, get the edges and corners lined up if you can. And try to get it uniform. Keep it from shifting. And then the third fold. And you're always going to have a little bit of the problem where the, the paper uh, lines start to pull out on one side because this side is uncut and this side is open. So there's a difference in tension between the two. Um, at this point you could just go ahead and fold it or you could um, make a tick mark and make a little reference line and we could actually continue making the notebook and then fold it and fold it only after we've cut this edge off. And let's go ahead and do that just to show you how to make it a little bit neater. So again this is optional but uh, I like to do it this way. So it's five and a half so half of that is two and a half plus a quarter is two and three quarter. Just make a couple little tick marks two and three quarter and this will be a reference for where you're going to fold it or staple it later on. Okay so now we have two folds. We're prepared to make a third fold. But first I'm going to take my cardstock cover and I'm going to make two reference marks also. Five and a half. Half of that is two and three quarter. And this just helps me to define where the spine is of the book. Okay, there we go. Now, if you put your paper with the two little tick marks and your cover stock with the two little tick marks on top of it, you'll see that you can line up those tick marks on both sides like that and just eyeball it. So now, holding this in your hand, I have my stapler and I have a reference line put in tape here. And what this is, this is one of these staplers where it's a reversible stapler um, and this inner part where it spreads the staples apart, we're not going to use that. We're going to use the standard staple position. That staple line is where we want to put the spine of the book because we want the staples to fold onto the inside. And so I'm going to get the cover stock and the inner paper lined up like this. And at this point, one of the things that helps to keep it lined up is if you take a bulldog clip, a metal bulldog clip, and get your paper lined up and just put it on the end here to help keep the paper from shifting. So what I'm going to do is the end of this taper, the arrow is pointing, is where is even with that the crimping point of the staple. And I'm going to simply put this book in here with my little pencil mark even with this line and then I'm going to flip around the bulldog clip and put it even with that line like that. And there we have a stapled book and filler paper. Okay, so before I fold the book and call it done, um, I'd like to go ahead and trim the corners. And it's a convenient time to do so before you fold it. I'm going to put the corners in the corner punch. I don't know if you know how these work, but you just simply put it in there and then squeeze it and you got a nice half round corner. I like to do the covers separate from the inner paper only because um, these little punches are kind of limited by how much paper they will cut at any one time. So we will cut the cover and then we'll go ahead and cut the inner filler. And it doesn't have to be perfect because you know it's handmade. Okay, now before we fold it there's one more crucial step that we have to do. The top edge of this book, the pages are open. The, top, the side here is open, but on this side the pages are closed up and on the bottom they're closed up. And so what we want to do is we want to trim those. And this is again where the metal straight edge comes in. 
So I'm going to start on the side here, open up my blade, and I'm going to use the straight edge to kind of hold down the book, and I'm going to overhang the edge of the paper ever so slightly on this metal, just so I trim off a really small amount of paper, just enough to open those pages and free them. Like that. So now they are free. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. And if you have a good paper trimmer, you can free all those pages up. Okay, it looks like they're all freed up. Yes, they are. Okay, so now the next step is we're going to fold it. And basically, you have the staples. It should fold right along where the staples are. And your two sides should be even with each other. And once you get the staple squeezed down, you can get your optional paper folding tool and kind of really crease the paper good because this cardstock is a little heavier duty than normal paper and get it nice and creased. And now you've just made yourself a wallet sized, pocket sized notebook that has 16 pages to write in, including a cover. How cool is that? Well, here are some examples of these neat notebooks that I've already made for myself. I think this was an early prototype where I wrote front and back. <laughs> and uh, this was just a simple paper uh, cover. Um, I use it for notes, uh, taking measurements, projects, you know, just grocery shopping. And this is a camera bellows, just all kinds of stuff. Uh, blogging ideas, just whatever you need a notebook for, that's what I use it for. Uh, this one, I laser printed. This is kind of a marbled craft paper. It's a little heavier than standard paper, but not quite as thick as cardstock. And I laser printed a little template here, my little neat notebook thing. This spent a lot of time in my wallet, so they do get a little bit dog-eared and creased, but that kind of lends them a little bit of charm. I put my little chop, my little tri trifoil stamp on here. And, uh, you know, it's just basically good old-fashioned writing, doodling, uh, drawing mazes, making notes about stuff. Let's see, here's one very similar to the one we just made, the same blue cardstock, but my little trifoil stamp on it. Uh, just notes, all kinds of fun stuff, right? Here's one that's made out of black craft paper. This is sort of scrapbooking paper. It's a Japanese style paper. And I put this little 3D lion little stamp on it just to have fun with it. But uh, it's kind of cool, kind of a nice little thing to have. This is that textured uh, paper that kind of looks like a cloth. Again, one of these uh, 3D stickers. And I don't know what's in here. Oh, just here's the serial number to my old, to my Corona standard. <laughs> All kinds of stuff in here. Uh, notes about video making and all kinds of stuff. You can see I'm using different colors of ink. Um, again, another one of the pre-printed neat notebooks with a marbled paper. Um, another one used up. Another black one, this time with a rhinoceros. So not a 3D stamp, but it's a rhinoceros stamp. Oh, this was interesting. This was an experiment. So I used some drafting vellum for this one. And uh, drafting vellum is translucent. So the problem with that as you can see, both the front and the back side of the paper, right? It didn't really work out too good. And you have to use kind of a felt tip pen, a permanent marker. Doesn't work as well with ballpoint. But it was kind of an experimental idea, this drafting vellum and black paper. And then another thing you can do, this is standard manila cardstock. But what I did with this is I laminated the cover in packing tape. So there's three stripes of two inch wide packing tape. One here even with this edge, one here even with this edge, and then the final one on top even centered on the spine. And it makes the notebook a little bit more resistant to moisture and all that, especially if you're putting it in a wallet that you, uh, you're going to be out and about and maybe you're perspiring or whatever or just 
it gets uh, you know a little bit damp or whatever it uh, it's going to help you to keep it a little bit better shape I was experimenting with logos for pinhole camera uh, pinhole cameras so ideas for a mini zine I have ideas for making zines with these notebooks now wouldn't that be cool to publish a zine with a notebook like that and if you did want to publish a zine using this kind of a notebook um, of course you're going to want to probably print these right so somehow maybe the laser printer or whatever at home so you might want to consider how would you pre-print a piece of paper to have 16 little pages on it and here's a way to do it you can fold up a piece of paper with the three folds and then you can mark it front uh, one two mark all the corners three four right mark the pages five six etc all the way up to 15 is on the inside here can't see it, but it's 15 is there and then the back cover and then when you unfold this you're going to have this template where you have these pages and some are going to be upside down relative to others and what you can do is with this as a template now you can go into a page layout design program or even uh, a word processing program and you can draw a template with lines defining where the edges of the paper are where the folds are and then you can lay out your text and your pictures on both sides and make a little uh, printed zine and then when you fold it together and put your card stock on it and staple it and trim the edges and corners you'll have yourself a little mini zine with pre-printed information pre you know you could have the uh, black and white graphics artwork poetry drawings or whatever so that is a really interesting idea I hope that you guys try doing that so of course I keep my used zines in a little stack and I just keep them bound together with a bulldog clip or even you know just with rubber bands and so that's kind of an archive and I haven't really figured out a good system for archiving I'm thinking you know maybe a, a three and a half by five a three by five file box might be one way or some little craft box you could just archive these by date as you fill up your little uh, uh, neat notebooks and wallet carry notebooks but I also keep a whole batch of newly made ones because as I suggested earlier when you make them you when you make the covers right out of cardstock you're going to kind of want them to do these in batches of four and so I've done a whole series of these that are already ready to go and um, if anybody wants one of these you know I can just pull out here here's here's a here's a new neat notebook here's the blue one that we just made but this one has the uh, packing tape uh, protective uh, cover and it has the little trifoil stamp that I like to use so I might go ahead and use the packing tape on this one and tape it up so it's going to be a little bit more resistant to wear but make yourself a stack of little neat notebooks or uh, wallet carry notebooks some some of these I have they say uh, concealed carry because <laughs> you put them in your wallet there or your purse and they're concealed so these are my wallet size notebooks I hope you guys have fun with this again they're not just for note-taking but you can also use these as miniature zines micro zines and I even have this idea of maybe if I was to get serious creatively speaking and actually make a real zine this size I was thinking of a little dispenser box that I could make out of cardboard and if I want to leave some of these zines at a coffee shop or whatever I could leave this little dispenser box with a nice little graphic artwork and a stack of these little books and you could do a little slot and they could just pull them out one at a time says please take one or whatever or maybe an honor system you know put a little nickel in a, in a slot in the box or whatever but there's an idea for being a, a zine publisher with these micro sized notebooks well I hope this uh, gave you guys some interesting ideas for making your own notebooks well, until next time, this is Joe Van Cleve, and I am an office supply junkie. Have yourselves a great day.